In the middle of the last century, great strides were being made to combat infectious diseases. The development of vaccines and antibiotics, the eradication of smallpox, and the drastic drop in polio cases were all signs of optimism. However, since then, we have seen the emergence of several infectious diseases, such as HIV AIDS, bird flu, SARS, Ebola, Zika, and the COVID-19 virus. Professor Malik Piris, the Chair of Virology of the School of Public Health in the University of Hong Kong, has identified several key factors that contributes to the emergence of these infectious diseases. We have the microbe itself, uh, and they have their characteristics of mutation, adaptation, but then these characteristics have been essentially the same going back thousands of years. The microbes haven't essentially changed their potential or their properties. What has changed is human activity. So changes in the environment, ecological degradation, deforestation, increasingly climate change will impact uh, the emergence of particularly vector-borne, mosquito-borne diseases. And then we have a whole host of human activities that are increasing the risk of emergence of uh, epidemics from animals to humans. And a few of them, of course, has potential for pandemic spread. The global wild animal trade has been identified as a key breeding ground for the potential emergence of infectious diseases. Very recently, there was a study done uh, in the wildlife trade in China, where they, they sampled something like uh, 2,000 animals that were being traded, and they identified 102 different viruses, 65 discovered for the first time and 21 of these were considered to be potentially high risk to humans and, or to other domestic animals. Professor Piris suggests that a change in approach is essential to meet the current challenges. So this is where the One Health uh, approach becomes so important. I mean, we are talking about essentially human problems uh, in terms of human health, but you cannot tackle these problems of human health by just uh, staying in our human health silo. Because, as I showed you, these involve interactions with animal health, wild animal health, and environmental health as well. After the SARS and Ebola outbreaks, there was a greater realization that an epidemic anywhere can become a threat everywhere. Many health frameworks and guidelines were drafted, and the need to invest in vaccine development for potential pandemic and epidemic threats was identified. The rapid development of the COVID-19 vaccine was possible because of groups such as Oxford AstraZeneca already being involved in preemptively developing vaccines for similar threats prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the triumphs, of course, of the pandemic was the speed with which these very safe and very effective vaccines were developed. But um, um, I don't have to remind you of the statistics, I mean, 9.5 billion doses administered as of the end of January, but uh, 36 states have vaccinated less than 10% of the population. Uh, and there is a huge inequity, as you can see here, in uh, vaccine delivery and how, how we can uh, do better in the future, I think it is going to be a major challenge. The need for greater investment in vaccine development and the need to develop more equitable delivery systems are not the only lessons coming out from the pandemic. In 2021, an independent panel for pandemic preparedness and response proposed several recommendations to help the world to be better prepared for future pandemics. Some of the key recommendations include raising international financing for pandemic preparation and response, developing surveillance systems, strengthening the independence, authority and financing of the WHO, and prioritizing pandemic preparedness among the political leadership. But ultimately, the need for a fundamental change in the way we live is inevitable. The emergence of pandemics is because we, we really are living beyond, uh, I mean, it, it's all because of things that we humans do that are disrupting the ecosystems uh, uh, and the biodiversity uh, of our planet. And this is not purely pertaining to pandemics because this also pertains to 
uh, what we are doing in terms of polluting our environment, in terms of air pollution, uh, in terms of climate change. So we really are living beyond the means of our planet, beyond the sustainable uh, capacity of our planet. And in nature, nothing can grow forever. Our obsession with perpetual growth uh, of GDPs uh, is not, I think, some, something that is sustainable. So I think we risk rupturing the limits of planetary sustainability unless as a global community, we change our way to develop 